guy requires. From that, you require what? The awareness and the knowledge of all or different kinds of clothes. Okay? You have to know that. Unless until you don't, you will not be able to tell what kind of clothes is this guy applicable. Uh, or what, what kind of clothes is applicable for this guy. Or how am I supposed to clothe this sale? Because the, the only pressure that you guys are taking right now is In the end of the call, when you know that there are all the blind signals available, but you still are not sure of how to cope with such a situation. A lot of sales are being done just because you get so excited, or you get nervous, or you have lack of overconfidence at times, and the customer actually goes here and there. What is missing? Missing is awareness of what kind of calls that you possibly can apply to this guy, or this call. Or most of the salespeople in the world, they only know one close and they know that they can do it so well they don't even need it anymore. What do they do then? They get the customer to talk about those kind of things which are their strengths. Whose strengths? Salespeople's strengths. That salesman is getting him in his territory and that is killing him. Okay, you have to get him in your own ground so that you, because you know when the team is playing a home match, there's no pressure, no crowd pressure, everyone's backing him up, right? Just like that, once you know that this is in my, this guy is in my territory, you ask me whatever you can. Now I know I own you. I know everything, and you don't even know what's going to hit you. That is the key. What is that particular strength? That strength is the knowledge of whatever makes that place his own ground, right? And that place is not only the awareness of opening skills, listening skills, how to probe, what kind of techniques you use in the probe, most importantly, when you know that this guy is qualified for a sale, then what is remaining? Presentation is simple product knowledge, right? Close. That is the only thing that you require as a salesman to know that as soon as you are in the later half of the call, you own that customer. There is no way that this is not going to be a sale. Most of you guys, what is your average call time? Talk time. On a call, how long do you spend on Jim? Call, call time, call time, Sorry, yeah. average call time. Yeah, four minutes, minutes. Oh, okay, that's not bad. Four minutes? That's a lot of seconds of talking, right, Taylor? Yes, sir. Same here? Four minutes? Four or five? Five. Jennifer? Mm -hmm. On average. average yeah. Four or five, everybody? Yeah, yeah. That means you have gone to the later half of the call. That means that you have done most that means that you do not suffer from lack of opening skills. Yeah. You know how to present and during your presentation, whatever happens is what is obviously evident in your figures. Yeah. So what you require is good enough approach for when to use a close. You require two things. The approach of how to use a close and the awareness of what kind of closes there could be possibly available at your disposal. Right? So timing, as I said, it's purely common sense, but the, the worst part about a closing skill uh, or a close is that you not only have to be very, very sharp in determining when to go for the close, but during that particular closing stage, you cannot make a single mistake. Okay, you have to be really aggressive and you let one pin down, he's going to pound you like as if he's the salesman, you were the customer. And you're going to buy everything you have to sell at that time. All right, I'll tell you this. Right now, whatever sale dump that you possibly have had, you will know that that is exactly what happened. You were not actually aware of how to break this wall because you were at a dead end, and you were only thinking about how to get away from that situation. You're not thinking about a sale. That product knowledge, that confidence, gone. What's going on? You do not know what next. What is the next step you're going to take? There are a lot of closes we're going to talk about, just a few, because it's a short time, as usual. First of all, you have to know the types of closes, then approach. What is the importance of close? That means when is a close applicable, first of all? When to go for it? When not to go for it? What is the bad time to actually ask for the sale? There are bad times, every, just, just about for you guys, every, every second is a bad time, right? What is a good time when the customer says, oh, are you going to sell it to me now? Yes, I am. That's not a close. He closed on you. You didn't close on Do you have that to offer? Yes, we have. And you still can't 
close it. Because you're afraid of asking the hard question. As I said, the only thing that you require is aggression. Everything else is knowledge. Skill is just a practice of knowledge. Isn't it? Skill is just a practice of knowledge that you get. Okay? Everybody can be skillful. Not everybody can, can be aggressive, but everybody can be skillful, and that is the point of today's meeting. Purpose of a close, as I said, you have to know why you need the close. Okay? How to close? We'll talk about it. Pressure situations and how to handle key areas. Same thing we're talking about. Better have a call, more pressure on you. Now you know that you have to get to the point. And you know that there's a limit to flirting. There's a limit to talking about it all and stuff, even though you, you made sure that you would talk about it so that you can develop that kind of a bit of relationship. Okay? But even with the, the hardiest of clients, the hardiest of clients, there's a point in time when you have to be really blunt and tell them that yes, now, are you going to buy from me or not? Even though you're enjoying your time on the call, but still you have to be that much more aggressive. You have to know that this pressure that is on you, you have to put it on the customer. Okay? But very gently. And you have to know the areas where you possibly can. When we talk about the closes, different type of clothes, there are different areas in how to actually go for the kill. That is why they're different. It's not just no, uh, the difference in words, but the difference in timing of those particular words of how to actually kill that particular duck. Do the doors of clothing. We'll talk about this. Lisa, can you scroll it up a little? Lisa, can you? Okay. First of all, uh, we'll cover the trial quote, okay? I want to read this and try and see what is probably, uh, you know, the background of this particular type of post. This module of this uh, is of the highest importance as skillful questioning. Skillful questioning, not questioning, skillful questioning. That means not just logical, but properly timed questions. That skill of question, you know, questioning skill is, type of questions, you want to ask a rhetorical question, direct question, overact question, indirect question, open-ended question, tie down, direct questions, closed-ended questions, you know what I'm saying? Different type of questions, you have to know, otherwise you, you can know all the types of closing, but you cannot close even one. You have to know the types of questions. Once you know the, the skill of questioning, and then you listen and pay attention to what is the time or when to ask the question. That's simple. So all you need is a lot of knowledge and very little time to apply that knowledge. If you're taking about what? 240 seconds in the call? Right? Now, the, uh, the agents should have all the knowledge and ability to utilize questions, <laughs> listening, and all the other skills that are prerequisites to, the, to support the effective training of closing the sale. Now, we all know the types of questions. Right? We know what a rhetorical question is. We know what a direct question is. We know what an indirect question is. We know what an open-ended question sounds like. When you say, how do you interpret that in your, or may I ask what are you assuming? Or can you explain that further? These are all open-ended questions which require speech from a customer. And that is what you require in opening of the call so that he can talk to you more and you can get to learn about him that much more, right? That is going to give you the type of customer that's going to help you determine the type of clothes and also help you determine what kind of question does this guy require to save my time and to get that sale, right? Now, you need all of this. These are prerequisites. If you don't, we'll talk about them. But well, I want you to know what are the kind of clothes so that you would know what the world is talking about, where the world is going, and where you are right now. It's more of a global overview right now, okay? We'll talk about assumptive clothes first, not trial clothes, even though it's you know, number one on the list. Assumptive clothes, why I want to talk about this before anything is because I want you to always assume the sale. Always, when you pick up the phone, assume that this is going to be your sale. Let's just imagine the opposite. If you assume that this is not going to be a sale, what's going to happen? It's not going to be a sale because you're down, you know it's not going to be a sale, even if it's a very, very light customer, first degree customer, and you're just going to take him 
as a 30 degree customer because you assume the opposite. It's not going to be sale. It's a bad day today. But let's just assume the opposite again. If you assume it's going to be a sale, if it's a hard customer, 30 degree customer, but still you're going to have that much more energy and more confidence. Say, yes, I'm going, to, I'm going to kill this, cook this duck, right? Then that's going to increase your odds. And for example, if you get a first degree customer, then that's no problem now. So always be positive. Assume the sale. First of all, assume the sale. Then you will say hello. Then you dial your numbers, right? Assume that it's going to be a sale. Let's just assume it's a sale and talk about it as though you've sold them already. The very nice approach it works most of the times only required when you uh, want things to happen for you, okay? <laughs> and that's every time, right? So what you do is, you pick up the phone and you assume it's going to be a sale, or you assume that I've sold to you already, so I call you and I talk to you as though I know you and I've sold to you before. Do not say that I have. Obviously, we both know we did. But let's just give ourselves that much more benefit of the doubt that yes, we have that ability, right? Let's just go for it. Let's go on a leash. Live a little. Try to take a chance. Do this, and you will know the difference in results. Let's come back to something close now. If you know, and I have nothing to do with something close though, okay? Something close is the part of the call in which you are now asking for the order. Assuming that Jesse wants it, since he's listening to your presentation now, you go for questions which relate to after sales. Like, if I send it to you now, would this be the right address? You know what I'm saying? He didn't even say he's going to take it. Yes, this is going to be the right address. He knows that you're assuming the sale, don't worry about it. But he does not know that this is a close that he's going into. Okay? Would this be the right address? Yes, this could be the right address. But why are you asking this? Oh, I'm asking you just because if you did get this set, you know, I don't want to miss out on any kind of details. But I don't want this set. Now, that's an objection. If you did not cover that, then do not go for the close. Got it? You covered this. This is a prerequisite. This is a later part of the call. So I'm actually, you know, looking at your your, your confused uh, gestures right now. So let's just assume that you've covered the presentation. You listen to it. You've handled most of the objections. There are going to be objections even before the last second of that, you know, before the handoff. There are going to be objections, but most of the objections have been covered. You presented all the answers and rebuttals. Now you assume the sale, and you didn't even ask for the order but you go for it, okay? For example, if I go to the shop and I say, do I have a, uh, can I, do you, have, do you sell pants? Yes, uh, can, can I offer you some, some blue jeans? Yeah, okay. Well, where, uh, what is your pro, you know, preference in, or brands? Okay, uh, you know. Versace. Give me an example. Versace. Versace? Yeah. Regulars. Jeans. Yeah, okay. Now I assume that you want this jeans, so what I do is I send it to you, to you uh, uh, in the fire room, and then I, when you come back, I've actually got one of those babies wrapped. So what else do you want, sir? And now that is an assumptive close by a retailer. Same thing apply on the phone. You got it? Now, what does that do to a customer? Imagine yourself in that shop buying that pair of jeans. You're under so, so much pressure because you cannot say no now. Why did you come in the shop and waste that shopkeeper's time in the first place? 